So let's talk about linear equations and what the possible outcomes can be when we solve it. So here's a full summary. Uh, if you solve a linear equation, there's three things that are possible. You can either end with classifying the equation as a conditional, or you can classify the equation as an identity, or lastly, it could be an inconsistency. Those are the three possible outcomes for the equation itself. How do you recognize if something is a conditional, if the original equation is a conditional? If after you solve it, you're left with a variable equals a number. So an example would be x equals 5 or y equals 3. So if you solve the equation and you get a variable equals a number at the end, then the original equation, the one that you started with, the one that was given to you, that equation is classified as a conditional. Conditionals only have one solution. So whatever you get, x equals 3 or y equals 5 or whatever you got, that is the only solution. There cannot be any other solutions. That's it. That's the only one. So actually, before I go on, let's see what that would look like. So here's an example of something very simple. 2x plus 3 equals 7. In order to solve this equation, we first subtract the 3 over. So that gives us 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 is obviously 4. So now we're left with 2x equals 4 as the equation. To solve for x, we divide by 2. So the 2 gets divided over, and you get 4 divided by 2, which is simply 2. Now, at this stage, before we go any further, the only thing we can say is we solved this equation, and we were left with a variable equals a number. So the only thing I can say is that the original equation must be a conditional, since we ended with a variable equals a number. Now, I have no idea if x equals 2 is the solution or not. I may have done this problem correctly. I may have made a mistake. The only way to verify if you have a solution or not is to plug it back into the original equation. At this stage, just stopping right here, I haven't done that. So I don't know whether x equals 2 is a solution or not. At that moment, the best I can say is it is a potential solution. It may get the job. It may not get the job. It's just the candidate. So now here, I plugged it in. I took x equals 2, and I plugged it in for x right there. So this equation then turns into 2 times 2 plus 3 equals 7. Well, we know 2 times 2 is 4, and then 4 plus the 3 is 7. So we get 7 equals 7. So after we replace, or after we substitute in, or after we plug in x equals 2 in the original equation, we get either a true statement or a false statement. So at this stage, this was just a potential solution. After I plug it into the original equation, I get a true statement. Uh, a number equals the number. So 7 does indeed equal 7. So I know that that's a true statement. Now what I can say is that x equals 2, that number 2 that we found, is indeed a solution to the original equation. At this stage, we cannot say that. We haven't tested it. After we test it by plugging it in, and we get a true statement, I know that it is the solution to the equation. And again, just to further drive this home, conditionals only have one solution. So x equals 2 is the only number that will satisfy this equation. No other numbers will work. So if x equals 2 is a solution, nothing else will be a solution. No other number could possibly be a solution if you have a conditional. Conditions only have one solution. And what happens if we try to plug in x equals 3? If we take the original equation and I plug in any other number besides 2, so 3 for instance, you would get 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 plus 3 is 9. And 9 does not equal 7. So 9 equals 7 is a false statement. So what can we say about x equals 3? Well, when I plug x equals 3 in the original equation, I get a false statement. That means x equals 3 is not a solution to the equation. So again, conditionals end with x equals a number. If you want to know whether that number really is the solution or not, you got to plug it in. And when you plug in the solution, 
whatever the number actually is, you'll get a true statement. If you plug in any other number, it doesn't matter what the number is, you're going to get a false statement because conditionals only have one solution. Only one number will work. No other number will work. So that is one possible way solving an equation can end. You can get a conditional. Next, come back here. So if we don't have a variable equals a number, the other option is that you have no variables left over, meaning you just have number equals number. Two equals two or two equals three. Those are the two possibilities. So either when you get number equals number, you'll get a true statement, meaning the number does indeed equal itself, or you'll get a false statement where the number and the other side are not the same. If you get a true statement, an example of that is two equals two, or three equals three, or five equals five, or zero equals zero, we call the original equation an identity. Identities have infinitely many solutions. Every number you can think of, whether you pick two or three or seven or negative five or negative 30 billion, all of those numbers will work. Meaning, if you were to take any number and plug it into the original equation, you're going to get a true statement every single time. On the other hand, what happens if number equals number is actually a false statement, meaning two equals three, one equals five, zero equals 10. Then we take the original equation and we classify it as an inconsistency. These will have no solutions. Nothing you plug in will work. It doesn't matter whether you plug in a small number, a big number, a fraction, a decimal, a zero, it does not matter. Inconsistencies will never make sense. It doesn't, no matter what you do in the world, $2 will never be $3. So let's see an example of an inconsistency first. Here's another equation, two times the quantity x plus three equals two x plus one. Now here, we need to clear parentheses first, so two times x is two x, two times three is six. At this stage, we move all the x terms to one side and all the non-x terms to the other side. So I'm going to take this 2x and move it to the left. And when I do, it becomes negative. And I'm going to take this positive 6 and move it to the right. And when I do, it's going to become a negative 6. So here we notice 2x minus 2x is 0. If you subtract something from itself, you're left with nothing. 3 minus 3, 0. 5 minus 5, 0. x minus x, 0. 2x minus 2x, 0. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. Now you'll notice that unlike the previous question, where we were left with x equals a number, variable equals a number, we have no variables left here. There is no x at this stage. So this is either going to be an inconsistency or an identity based on whether this guy is true or false. So in no universe, it doesn't matter what you do, Zero will never equal negative five. It's not possible, cannot do it. So if you have no variables left over, no variables left over, you just have number equals number, and you have a false statement, zero equals negative five, the original equation will be an inconsistency, and there will be no solutions. Nothing you try will work. So let's see that in action. So at this stage, the only thing we can say is that there are no variables left over and this thing is a false statement. That means that the original equation that we started with must be an inconsistency. There will be no solutions. Inconsistencies have no solutions. That means you can try any number you want, but you will always get a false statement. And the only way you know if something is a solution is after you plug it in or you drop it into your equation, you get something true. So here I tried two numbers. I tried x equals one and I tried x equals zero. To keep the video short, I'll let you see that you do indeed plug it in and you end up with a false statement. X, uh, I'm sorry, eight equals three. That's not true. Eight dollars and three dollars are not the same amount of money. And if we plug in zero into this equation, we get six equals one. That's also a false statement. $6 and $1 are not the same amount of money. 
So what we can say is neither of these numbers are solutions, which is expected because nothing is a solution. Inconsistencies have no solutions. I just plugged in these two numbers to show you or to make you believe that really there is nothing you could plug into an inconsistency and get an answer. That There is nothing that will lead to a true statement. On the other hand, flip side of that coin is an identity. So here we have 3x plus 6 equals 3 times the quantity x plus 5 minus 9. So parentheses have to be cleared first. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 5 is 15. At this stage, I want to move all the x terms to one side and all the non-x terms to the other side. So I take this 3x and I move it to the left, which makes it a negative 3x. And I take this positive 6 and I move it to the right, which makes it a negative 6. Now I can combine like terms. And as I just said earlier, if you subtract something from itself, you get 0. So 3x minus 3x would simply be 0. There's no more x's left. 15 minus 9 is 6, and then 6 minus 6 is just 0. So again, we have no variables left over at this stage. And we have a true statement of 0 equals 0. 0 does indeed equal 0. So that means that the original equation, the thing that we started with, is an identity. If we have no variables left over, no variables left over, you just have a number equals a number, 0 equals 0, and that is a true statement. That means the original equation is an identity, and there are infinitely many solutions. Every number you plug in is going to work. So I tried to pick some random ones instead of 0 and 1. I picked 10 and negative 5. And just to reiterate, there will be infinitely many solutions. Every number you can think of, all real numbers you can imagine, will be solutions. This means you can try any number you want. Positive, negative, decimal, fraction, zero. It does not matter. You will always get a true statement when you plug it in. So if we try x equals 10, I'll let you verify independently that you do indeed get 36 equals 36, which is a true statement. Similarly, if we plug in negative 5, we end up with negative 9 equals negative 9. Both of these are true statements. So what does that mean? Well, when I take a number and I plug it into the original equation and I get a true statement at the end, which is 36 equals 36, that means that this number I had plugged in is a solution. What happens if we plug in a number into the original equation and we get a false statement. That means that number I had plugged in is not a solution. So if you plug in a number and it comes out to be true, you have a solution. If it comes out to be false, you don't have a solution or that number is not a solution. And that's the end of it. So again, if you're classifying an equation, the three options you have for the equation are identity, inconsistency, or conditional. If you have a variable left over at the end and a number on the other side, you can classify this as either it's going to be a solution or not a solution. How do you know it's a solution or not a solution? Plug it in. So if we take the number and we plug it into the original equation, we get either a true statement or a false statement. So hopefully that makes sense and wraps things up for us.